Western Broadway Curve Improvement Project runs along 11 miles of Interstate 10 in both directions, roughly between I-17 by Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport and the Loop 2 to Santan South Mountain Freeway. We have three freeways that meet. So you've got a lot of traffic that's trying to either merge westbound onto I-10 from westbound US-60, or you have traffic that's heading westbound on I-10 trying to merge northbound on SR-143, all within a short distance of those two interchanges. So because of that, you have a lot of traffic that's changing lanes and jockeying to get into position to where they need to go. The road behind us here is a brand new collector distributor roadway. And so, um, we're adding a new roadway adjacent to an existing, but also widening the existing. And the purpose of these collector distributor or CD roads is to separate the traffic from um, the mainline traffic that's just passing through the Broadway curve area from the traffic that's trying to get off at US 60 or at SR 143 or Broadway Road or 40th Street. The, the collector distributor roads are essentially longer entrance and exit lanes. So if you are getting on the freeway or you're getting off, your lane will change. One of the bigger challenges to the job is just making sure that the commuters can get to uh, where they're going every day. So uh, commitment to the job is just make sure that we're maintaining the same number of lanes in each direction uh, at all times, except for when we've got a full freeway closure. We have to be able to get to those older work areas and while still maintaining the same number of lanes. So it's just been a big challenge, but we've been able to overcome it. ADOT's been very accommodating with splitting traffic to maintain freeway speeds. That's been kind of new to the area. But when we have a full closure, we're trying to utilize that time and get as much work done in the closures that we can. Uh, to one, so that we're not doing nightly closures and having bigger impacts on traffic throughout the week. We try to use those times on the weekends to get as much done as we can. We couldn't build this job without subcontractors, and so we've got a lot of people engaged, like the concrete pavers, the barrier guys, um, the temporary barrier movements and the striping is a really big component of these shifts on the weekends. We recognize that there's over 5,000 businesses along this corridor. It's an 11-mile stretch. Um, and a lot of businesses that are affected. So we had a business forum in 2019, and then we did a freight and logistics forum because we wanted to talk with those people that were going to be most impacted by the construction on our project. So when we were talking with some of the businesses, there were some um, that we found out have trucks that run up and down the corridor at all times during the night. And so while we allow the contractor to shut down lanes during the evenings and shut down the freeway during the, um, the weekends, we worked with those particular businesses to be able to find out how quickly do you need to know about a closure so that you can pivot and get your people where they need to go. In terms, the magic number on that is a week. So the contractor is required to give at least a week's notice whenever the freeway is going to be closed down. We have a mobile app. This is ADOT's very first project-specific mobile app. It's called The Curve. It's free for Android and um, Apple users. We have more than 20,000 people who have downloaded this app and we have thousands that use it regularly because it gives them the, the updates and the, the restrictions that they need to know before they head out the door. We also have a paid advertising campaign. This is um, something that the America for Association of Governments graciously allowed us to do. Um, it's the first time that ADOT has ever done paid advertising for a project as well. And the idea was to get project information out to a much larger group of people instead of just those that are along the corridor. So currently right now crews are working on completion of the um, HOV ramps, the flyover ramps that you see behind me. These flyover ramps will be for westbound um, I-10 traffic heading northbound to SR-143, but it also helps the southbound SR-143 traffic using the HOV lane heading eastbound on I-10, which will make access to the Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport much easier. Now, construction for this project began in July of 2021, and completion is expected to be in early 2025. So when we can get the, the collector distributor roadways open, it, it frees up all that work and lets us put final striping down, do the final diamond grinding and the final asphalt surfacing uh, elsewhere on the job, and really do the overhead sign work and, and final painting and really put the, the shine on the job, get the finished touches done.